In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create stunning dark sky black and white photos where the sky and buildings are black except for small patches of light. Most of these are done with painstaking editing in Photoshop, but you can easily create this effect in Lightroom with a little bit of thought. The image I'm using is of the Catholic Cathedral in Liverpool, shot on a sunny day. You can even see the shadows on the building from the sun which is top left but out of frame. To start, we'll select the sky so we can turn it to black. To do this, click the masking icon in the toolbar below the histogram. Now we can select the sky option which selects the sky in the image. This produces a good selection except for a small area of sky in the lower left of the frame. We don't need to worry about this though for reasons that you'll see later. Now we can darken the sky by dragging the exposure slider to the far left. At this point the sky isn't quite black enough and we can still see some of the clouds. One way of fixing this is by moving the amount slider to the right to strengthen the adjustment. Alternatively, we can duplicate the mask by clicking the menu icon in the mask panel and then selecting the duplicate option. Now I can use the exposure slider on the duplicate mask to darken the sky even further. Now we have a black sky, let's return to the global adjustments by clicking the edit icon in the toolbar. At the top of the basics panel, click the black and white option, which converts the image to black and white. Then come down to the black and white panel, where you can adjust the colour response sliders. These are what control how dark or light a colour is when it's converted to black and white. Usually I suggest testing each of these sliders by moving them left and right, but in this case I did it earlier and I know that I only need to use the blue slider. By moving it left, I can darken the blues, which emphasises the shadows and gives the feeling of light coming from the top left of the frame. Let's go back to the masking now so we can choose to darken the building. To select the building, all we need is the inverse of the sky mask. Click the menu to the right of one of the sky selections, then choose the duplicate and invert option. This produces a new mask selecting the building. We can then move the exposure slider left until the histogram is compressed on the far left and the image appears dark. It's then time to add some of the light patches to the building using the radial gradient. Click the create new mask icon and then select the radial gradient from the options. To draw the gradient, click on the image where you want to position the center and then drag whilst holding down the mouse button. I can then click and drag the handles to resize and rotate it. The feather slider is also extremely useful for softening and controlling the effect. With the radial gradient in place, I'll increase the exposure slider to lighten the area. But I'm also going to increase the contrast and clarity sliders. These can help to make the effect look more realistic. Now let's add another radial gradient, but to the top of the cathedral on the left side. Once that's in position, I'll increase the exposure, contrast and clarity as I did before. But with this gradient, I'll also increase the white slider to help make the effect look more intense by creating highlights. The black and white effect is now looking quite good on this image, but we can still improve the lower edges of the building to darken them. To do this, we can use the linear gradient to select the area. First click the add mask icon in the masks panel and then choose the linear gradient from the options. Like with the radial gradient, you click and drag using the mouse to draw it. Notice that I'm creating a large feathered gradient to produce a softer shadow effect. I can then move the exposure slider to the left to darken the selection. Now I'll repeat this but drawing the gradient to the bottom left of the frame. Notice that I'm aligning the gradient with the existing shadows on the building to help make it look more realistic. Then I'll move the exposure slider to the left to darken the area. Now you may want to leave the image at this point, but it could look good if we add a bright light in the top left of the frame. To create this, we can add a large soft radial gradient. Then if we drag the exposure slider to the right, it begins to lighten the area, but only slightly initially. Now add a second radial gradient, this time with more of an oval shape. As with the other radial gradient, move the exposure slider to the right, which produces a bright flare effect. We can then adjust the feather slider on both gradients to control the effect, as well as using the amount slider. The overall transformation is now quite convincing and a lot quicker than using Photoshop. But a dark sky black and white image isn't the only thing we can do using this technique. In this next video, I demonstrate how to use the same techniques to turn a daytime photo into an atmospheric nighttime scene, 
It's a great one to watch next, even if you might have seen it before. Thanks for watching today, and if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon for another video.